This is the second lesson in the Laravel architecture concept series following the one on service container. I recommend watching the lessons in order as each one builds upon the previous. With that in mind, let's get started. This is where we reached in the previous lesson, binding a service via the routes file. But in practice, we do this in the service provider. And by default, Laravel provides us with the provider that we can use. So if you go to providers, you go to app service provider, it's in the register method that you write the logic to bind a service. Therefore, I can grab this, paste it here, and then import the calculator. And since we are explicitly binding a service into the container, we need to explicitly provide the arguments that are required by the service. Therefore, I'll come here and I'll create a user. Then create a new instance of it and pass it here. Now when you refresh the page, everything works as before. And basically that's it. Uh, that's, that's what a service provider is. It's a place where you can bind services into the container. A side note, here we are using the app helper function. In the service provider, we also have access to the app property, which you can use instead of the app helper function. They all do the same thing. So I can just come here and say this app, and then save that. Uh, we need to have an arrow here. And when you refresh the page, everything works as before. Now this is cool, but in large applications, you might want to create your own service provider. And that is possible uh, you can use the the artisan command and that is make provider artisan command and the name can be anything that you want but the convention is to use the name of the service which is calculator then you suffix it with service provider and if you do that a service provider will be created for you i'll copy this then go to the service provider created which is here go to the register method and paste that and save then import calculator Import the user, refresh the page, and everything works as before. Now, all along we've been using this bind method. And before we discuss it in depth, let's promote this argument so that this class can have um, a state. The bind method, it is used to bind a service into the container. It also ensures that every time we resolve a service, it creates a new object. Let me prove that to you. If I come here, comment this out, we are going to resolve the, uh, the service. So then dump, that is up, make method to resolve. And then that is calculator class. Then I'm going to resolve it again so that we can resolve it twice to see this. When I refresh the page, you see we have 242 and 247. So every time we resolve it, we create a new object. But in this case, it's ideal because the state of the class is changing. You see here we have user 242, we have user 241. But we have cases where creating the object again when you resolve it, creating all the time, it's not ideal. Let me show you. If I come here and go to the calculator service, then let's change this to a string. That will be a string. Then let's change this to be more descriptive. That is name. Save that. Here we are going to change this. This is no longer a user object, but a string. So ray string. Then this has changed to name. And when you refresh the page, we get two different objects, 244, 242, but the state does not change. So in this case, it's not ideal. We are recreating um, an object, but it's not necessary to recreate it. Again, 
if um, depending on how many times you're recreating the object and how expensive it is to recreate it, this can affect the performance of the application. So in this case, it's ideal to create the object once and then just reference it. And to do that is very easy. You just change the method to singleton. Come back, refresh, and you see now we get 245 and 245. So the service container will create it once and whenever you resolve it again, it will just reference the object that was initially created instead of creating another one. And by the way, this is what is called the single tone pattern, which is a design pattern that ensures a class has only one instance in an application. Last but not least, let's talk about this boot method. And this is um, this method gets gets executed when all the register methods in all providers have been executed. Therefore, it means in this boot method, you have access to all the services. So if you need to write a code that depends on other services to be available, this is the ideal place to do that. For example, let's say we want to use the, the file service. So we can come here and say app, this app, then let's uh let's resolve so for the file service let's see the key that is used in the container so if you come here and scroll down to vendor laravel framework then source illuminate here we have the components that come with laravel so if you're working with um mail the logic uh, for the service will be here if you're working with the notifications now we want to work with the log let's go to the log service provider and the key being used here is log. So let's resolve that. Come back here, resolve log. Now we'll have that service. And if you check that service, it has a method called info. And here we can pass a string. For now, let's just say log success. Save that. Then let's go to the log file. It's empty. Let's go back to the browser. Let's refresh, go back. And here we can see that the text has been logged here. And that's it for the service providers. If you want to learn more about it, please check out the documentation. And I'll also leave a link in the description. See you in the next lesson where we will learn about the Laravel facades. Cheers.